Hello and welcome to another at History Gems, and as it's nearly bonfire night, what else could we do but the gunpowder plot? Remember, remember the 5th of November, gunpowder treason and plot. I see no reason why gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. Now don't panic, don't panic, it's me, it's me. This, of course, is imagery that was based on V for Vendetta, a 1980s comic book that got turned into a movie and has now become hijacked by a whole series of movements, anything from anonymous uh, to anti-corporate rallies that have happened. However, this is meant to be Guy Fawkes, a man who would not have stood for any of those things that are, he's now being associated with. It's a little surprising. Of all the events in British history, this is the one that gets remembered every single year. What's also interesting is that the leader wasn't even Guy Fawkes. It was a guy called Robert Casement, who's become completely forgotten by history. Guy Fawkes was the man actually caught at the scene. He was captured, tortured, and made to give up the names of the other conspirators. The year was 1605, and what happened was, with a new king, King James I of England... James VI of Scotland, came to the throne a few years earlier, and he was a Protestant, but there were lots of Catholics in Britain, and they wanted a Catholic ruler. So a group of them, a total of 13 of them, got together with the cunning plan to blow up the Houses of Parliament with all of Parliament and the King in it. Now this was a period where terrorist attacks using explosives hadn't really been invented yet, so the Houses of Parliament actually rented out the rooms underneath the building for storage purposes. Why not make a bit of money? However, it never really occurred to anybody that somebody might roll 36 barrels of gunpowder in underneath the Houses of Parliament, and the rest, as they say, is history. But is it? What's surprising is these barrels were rolled in, and then they had to wait for weeks there was an outbreak of plague in London, which set back all the dates. So there were weeks to discover these barrels of gunpowder. Also, 36 of them isn't exactly easy to hide. So really, this is one of these events where the fact that it got to Guy Fawkes about to light the fire, about to set things off, is actually remarkable that it ever got that far. Let's not forget that one of the group managed to send a letter to his benefactor to say, don't turn up on November the 5th, things might go a bit bad, and oh, be a good boy, don't tell anybody about this. That kind of planning deserves to be punished. Fawkes, as I said, was captured, tortured, gave up the names of the others. The others tried to escape, there was a shootout, but basically all the conspirators were caught, tortured some more, just for good measure, and executed. It was a plan that never should have worked, and indeed didn't work. Now, every year, we burn an effigy of the man. The man who wasn't even the ringleader. Of all the threats that Britain has faced, it's slightly baffling how Guy Fawkes has come to symbolise all the threats to the UK. But, on that note, have a great bonfire night. Burn a Guy Fawkes for me and set off loads of gunpowder. If you enjoyed this, there's more. There's at History Gems on Twitter and on Facebook. See you soon.